Hello everyone, I am Be Better Gamer. Welcome to Be Better Gamer Wrestling. This channel is dedicated to the classic series of N64 wrestling games developed by Aki Corporation, such as WCW vs. NWO World Tour, WCW NWO Revenge, Virtual Pro Wrestling 64, Virtual Pro Wrestling 2, WWF WrestleMania 2000, and WWF No Mercy, which is the subject of today's video, and I am going to be continuing my hardcore championship path with none other than Mr. Monday Night, Mr. PPV, the whole effing show, Rob Van Dam, and you can't see me, but I was doing the thumbs pointing to the shoulders thing that Rob Van Dam would do. And I hope you did it as well when I said Rob Van Dam. So, Rob Van Dam, obviously not in WWF No Mercy. He is my third creator wrestler that I am using for my Let's Play series in my Intercontinental Championship Let's Play. I did a Macho Man call, and I won the IC title with him. And then just previously, my last Hardcore Championship run was with the Raven, my Raven call. And now this is my very own custom Rob Van Dam call. I'm going to be talking mostly about, you know, like all my other Let's Plays, Rob Van Dam's time as the Hardcore Championship. There I am DQing myself. The very first match is not even a Hardcore match, but I got to DQ myself. I got to lose a lot. Just like the Raven video, I didn't anticipate this path to be so short. You know, next time for my next Let's Play series, when I, I'm going to make sure I'm going to go through the paths. Make sure to see which, one are, which ones are short and which ones are long so that the guys I really want to talk at length about, I'll do the long, you know, career paths for and the short ones for the guys that I might not have as much to say. Rob Van Dam, I mean, he was one of my favorite wrestlers in ECW. One of the guys that I never thought I would see in WWF slash WWE. And the accomplishments he managed to obtain in WWE I mean in ECW he was legendary status you know he was a tag team champion with Sabu two-time tag team champion that's where I first became aware of RVD was when he was teaming with Sabu and but really his claim to fame in ECW not only was he just one of the best wrestlers on the planet at the time but he was the TV title champion for a record of 23 months at 700 days, no one could beat Rob Van Dam. And it's not like he defended his title every five months, every six months, you know. He was a fighting champion, defending his championship at every major ECW pay-per-view, having amazing matches with the likes of guys like Sabu and Jerry Lynn. You know, just classics. Rob Van Dam, every time he came out, put on a show, which is why he was the whole and show here I am I'm gonna give my special to Shawn Michaels a little thing I should say about this call so Rob Van Dam obviously his finisher was the five star frog splash and you know they only have a regular five, uh, you know frog splash in this game in later WWE games he was given a more unique frog splash that was similar to how he did his style of frog splash and you saw I did my front special was the super kick I decided on that being his front special there's his spinning back kick, his Van Daminator, if you will. I'm going to go into more detail about this call, about what I did and what I chose for it and how to make it. Obviously, I do create a wrestler videos where I upload how to make the wrestlers the way I made them. You don't have to keep it that way. If you see anything about this call that you want to change on your own, go ahead. But this is like, you know, how I did it. And you can use it as sort of a template. Here I go. I'm going outside. Bam. This match is interesting because I got to win with 10 strong grapples. And I thought that was very interesting because, you know, this is kind of like a tutorial match. So I'm guessing they wanted you to play the hardcore championship and lose the first match and then they teach you how to play the game <laughs> so if you started playing the world championship or any other championship path you don't really get matches like this where it's like all right do 10 strong grapples in the match so you know how to play the game if you've never played an aki wrestling game before this is how you do it so that's the really interesting thing but you're gonna notice a lot of key there he goes diving to the outside a lot of key RVD maneuvers and taunts. He had a very unorthodox style. It's something that you would hear Jim Ross say a lot when he came into the WWE. But he made his debut in WWF 
on July 9th, 2001 on an episode of Raw with a few other ECW alumni. It was during the whole invasion angle. WCW was invading WWF and then all of a sudden ECW joined the party. In actuality, ECW's business had closed, but Paul Heyman and a lot of other guys were working with WWF at the time, and they brought in some extra ECW talent like Tommy Dreamer, like Sandman, and a few other people. Some ECW alumni like Taz, Tajiri Raven were already part of WWF before ECW closed its doors, so you were able to add the ECW brand to that whole invasion angle. Obviously, hindsight is 2020, and the invasion angle wasn't as exciting as it could have been but there was a lot of backstage stuff going on a lot of politics a lot of contract you know red tape everyone had to go through but through it all Rob Van Dam was very clearly one of the most popular wrestlers that they brought in from both companies from WCW and ECW the invasion angle painted the ECW wrestlers and the WCW wrestlers as heels as villains coming in to take over wwf so you were supposed to boo them all the time and they even booed guys like booker t who were fan favorites in wcw but when rob van dam showed up no one booed the guy because he was amazing he was rob van dam you know he was the whole effing show and he was just always had always had this charisma and if you were a fan of him in ecw like i was before he came to wwf there was no way you're gonna boo him even if the, he was supposed to be a bad guy. And, you know, he had a great hardcore championship run. In my opinion, you know, I talked a lot about in my previous Let's Plays with the hardcore championship not living up to its expectations. But if you do want to look at one specific hardcore championship reign, that would be when Rob Van Dam was the hardcore champion. He was actually hardcore champion four times. But from July 2001 to December 2001, he managed to get three separate hardcore championship reigns. Um, you know, again, he, he made his debut in the beginning of July, and very quickly he was involved with a feud with Jeff Hardy, who was the hardcore champion at the time. And he actually defeated Jeff Hardy at the Invasion pay-per-view, you know, the big marquee pay-per-view about the Invasion angle. He defeated Jeff Hardy for the Hardcore Championship, and they would have a little bit of a back and forth. Uh, he would lose the title back to Jeff Hardy a week before their SummerSlam rematch, and then he would regain the title from Jeff Hardy at the SummerSlam pay-per-view in a ladder match, in a hardcore ladder match, if you will. Um, and all great matches with Jeff Hardy. Very, very fun matches. You know, the Invasion pay-per-view match was great. The SummerSlam pay-per-view match was great, you know, and they had a follow-up match on SmackDown that was pretty interesting. It ended, it ended. I don't know, I don't, you know, I didn't do too much research on that ending, but it ended with Jeff Hardy doing the Swanton off the ladder, and then they stopped the match, and RV, and then Raven came in and started flying. I don't know if that was all storyline or whatever, but definitely check out the Invasion and SummerSlam matches with Jeff Hardy. Obviously, they would have a history later on in, in the company going on with, with feuds over the IC title and world title and things like that. Um, but Rob Van Dam very quickly getting the Hardcore Championship. And again, my biggest point about the Hardcore Championship that I discussed in my previous Let's Plays was that I never felt they gave it time to be a championship and to have it elevated to... The level of importance as their other secondary titles as something as the intercontinental title you know it was very much a gimmick very much comedy belt with the 24 7 rob van dam won the title the 24 7 rules were in effect but they were only used sparingly when rob van dam was the champion obviously when jeff hardy won the title back from him after invasion it was during the 24 7 rules Rob Van Dam was having a match with Kurt Angle, and then Jeff Hardy came in when all the other Invasion, you know, wrestlers were trying to interfere in that match. But it was used very sparingly when RVD was a champion. He was a very much a fighting champion and beating guys on a weekly basis. And the hardcore matches, again, the focus wasn't on the hardcore. You know, I think people underestimated ECW in the sense that it was this hardcore promotion. I'm doing air quotes, another thing you can't see. But there was a lot of great wrestling going on in ECW, and the the you know the no DQ, the able to use tables and chairs that was just all 
extra stuff, really. It wasn't a necessity. And a lot of times, a lot of the matches that RVD was involved in, in ECW or even his hardcore championships in WWE, he didn't, didn't really need to rely on the weapons and all the different tools that you can use in a hardcore championship because he could just put on great matches without that. Perfect example would be his match with Jericho at Unforgiven 2001. So after he won the title from Jeff Hardy at SummerSlam, um, he actually faced Kurt Angle on a match on Raw on September 10th, 2001. And he tapped out to the Angle Lock at the base of the Titantron. So Angle actually became hardcore champion for a brief moment. Stone Cold Steve Austin came out, threw Angle off the stage, and then he threw Rob Van Dam off the stage because he was being, you know, the tyrant leader of the invasion. Tough love for all his guys. And RVD quickly regained the title, pinning, you know, Angle, even though they were both hurt after being thrown off the stage. But Rob Van Dam would get the title back, and that would lead into Unforgiven 2001, where he would face... Chris Jericho and another fantastic match yes they used chairs yes they used ladders but that wasn't like the main selling point of that match they were just having a great wrestling match with you know a little extra help and I think that with RVD being the hardcore champion especially coming off his amazing run in ECW he was given a chance to show that I mean RVD if you really think about it RVD's time as the hardcore champion and you know the hardcore champion that would be his successor successor after his third reign um, he really elevated the title to a top tier title because not only was he putting on great matches with the like uh, likes of Jeff Hardy and you know even Matt Hardy and a lot of other mid card wrestlers um he was involved in a lot of high profile main event feuds he even had a match with Stone Cold Steve Austin during his time as hardcore championship his 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 couple of bouts with Kurt Angle feuding with Jericho the Rock, uh, Rob Van Dam and The Rock had a hardcore championship match that main invented an episode of SmackDown. I don't think there was another hardcore championship match that main invented a Raw or SmackDown. I could be wrong, but that's pretty high profile stuff, you know. And then obviously, uh, Rob Van Dam would lose his third championship reign to The Undertaker. That's a big deal. Rob Van Dam as the Hardcore Championship Champion, you know, much like how I talked about when Cena was the U.S. Heavyweight Champion in one of my previous Let's Plays, you know, there's certain guys, they bring their star power to the championship and it elevates the championship and you can see that with, the, with Rob Van Dam. Rob Van Dam brought that essence, that aura of ECW. You know, not it wasn't just about the blood and the sex and the violence. There was great wrestlers in ECW. Guys like Guerrero and Milenko put on clinics in ECW. Guys like Saturn who were underrated with Kronos and the Eliminators. I've talked about them in the past. You know, Rob Van Dam, Jerry Lynn, so many guys. You know, Tajiri, Super Crazy, Little Guido. ECW had great wrestling. Lance Storm. <laughs> you know, great wrestlers, and Rob Van Dam, I feel like he took that as a challenge, as an opportunity, he's like, well, I just came into the promotion, they're giving me this hardcore championship, it's been kind of a joke, it's been the 24-7, you know, Crash Holly, running around, this and that, and he took it, and he made it special, because again, he's coming out, everyone's cheering him, He's doing all his flashy moves, his unorthodox style, as Jim Ross would say. You know, he he's he's going above and beyond in all these matches. He's taking those three minutes, five minutes he's given on Raw and SmackDown. And he's making it the highlight of the evening. You know, that's why he always called himself Mr. Monday Night, even when he was in ECW. And he had that brief, you know, WWF run-in. He would come back and he would call himself Mr. Monday Night. There was always a lot of truth there. Rob Van Dam always gave you a show. He always gave you a performance. And that's what I loved about him. And that's what I loved about his hardcore championship run. Honestly, if you want to look at the hardcore championship... You want, it's very easy to say which run was the best run. I know I joke a lot about Steve Blackman. I love Steve Blackman. He had a pretty cool run too as the hardcore champion. 
But seriously, in my opinion, Rob Van Dam had the most legitimate run as the hardcore champion. Because again, yeah, he did the Van Daminator where he needed a chair. You know, he put the chair in your face, do a jump spinning back. Hey, he'll put you in the corner. He'll do that running, you know, turnbuckle baseball slide where he would hit you with the chair. Um, you know, but his finisher was the frog splash, the five star frog splash. And he, you know, he, he was just a great mat wrestler. He trained with the Iron Sheik. He trained with Sabu. He, you know, he's, he has a lot of technical ability. And Robin Nam is one of those athletes who, man, like, every time I saw him, it was just like, is there anything he couldn't do? Like, Robin Nam could do it all. And I think that's what made his hardcore championship run stand out. Um... I don't think after, you know, his last big feud with the Hardcore Championship was against The Undertaker. It was a kind of a brief feud, but it culminated at the Vengeance pay-per-view December 9th, 2001. Another great Hardcore Championship match. Undertaker would beat Rob Van Dam with a big choke slam off the stage into the tables below. And he would be, but here's Rob Van Dam going toe to toe with the Undertaker for the Hardcore Championship. Like, think think about that. Think about the time, 2001. You know, this is before Rob Van Dam would achieve every. You know, we're still fresh off of ECW has closed its doors. WCW has closed its doors. Now you got all these WCW and ECW guys who you would have never thought, and you've never dreamed of being in WWF. And you to see someone like Rob Van Dam. I know sometimes wrestling fans can get jaded. And even now, nowadays, we're having such an influx of talent from so many different promotions. So many different walks of the wrestling world. You know, you got guys like Nakamura, big star in Japan. Kota Ibushi, a big star in Japan. AJ Styles, he had that long run in TNA and around the world. Samoa Joe, all these great guys that people hold dearly. And I feel like a lot of people, they get impatient. They see these guys, they see them lose a match here, lose a match there, and they think, oh, WWE is just trying to bury them. WWE is just trying to ruin them. WWE is not making them as important as they should be. And... I'm sure there was a lot more truth to that back in the day because back in the day, you know, a lot of the guys would say it really was a war, it really was a Monday Night War, and there was a lot of animosity, and even Jericho has gone on record and said, you know, he got a lot of heat backstage when he first showed up, and, you know, I'm sure it has gone on, but I feel like nowadays it's a little bit different. They want to give t guys a little bit more time to showcase their ability and build up to the stars that they are just in WWE. And you look at someone like Rob Van Dam, he went out and he seized the opportunity first right off the gate. He didn't let anyone hold him back. If they were going to make him lose or if they were going to, he had to make it so like they couldn't or they would have to do it in a way that would protect them because he was so good. There are just certain guys that are so good that no matter where they go, they're going to be stars. And just look at, he, you know, Rob Van Dam would become the 8th Grand Slam champion in the WWE, the 15th Triple Crown champion. He won basically all the titles worth winning. He was the World Tag Team Champion. He was the Hardcore Champion, Intercontinental, European, the regular Tag Team Champion. Again, that always bugs me, the world and the tag team, but whatever. Um, he would even win the Money in the Bank, and even though he didn't win the ECW Triple Crown while he was in ECW, he would win the ECW championship while in WWE. I mean, he did it all. He did it all. He was a perfect example of someone who was brought in for another company and became, if not a bigger star in WWE than he was in ECW. Could he have been a bigger star? Yes, he could have. Rob Van Dam has issues. <laughs> you know, he, he defies authority. He doesn't play by the rules all the time. And he's a, he's a very creative spirit in that sense when it comes to wrestling. And a lot of that stuff held him back from probably being the flagship face of WWE. You know, much like Jeff Hardy. Much, but, you know, I feel like Jeff Hardy probably had a little bit more demons than Rob Van Dam. Um, and Rob Van Dam, though, that still never stopped him from always going out there and giving it his all. And giving it his best. You know, he would lose the title to Undertaker. But Rob Van Dam actually technically, technically was the last hardcore champion. So another iconic, you know, moment in the history of the hardcore championship belongs to Rob Van Dam. Because he would unify the hardcore championship 
with Tommy Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer was the hardcore champion. Rob Van Dam was the intercontinental champion. And they had a unification match on an episode of Raw in 2002, I believe. And that was the last time that you saw the hardcore championship. It was an August 26th episode of Raw. And Rob Van Dam beat Tommy Dreamer, another ECW alum. Tommy Dreamer had a pretty good run as hardcore champion. Um, and there it is, you know, Rob Van Dam. Again, it, it, felt, it feels like a longer time than it was. You know, Rob Van Dam's hardcore championship reign didn't even go longer. If you count all the different reigns, you know, he had the third most total combined number of days, being 134 across the four reigns. But his longest reign, which was his third reign, um, he only held the title for about 90 days. So, he, he, you know, he's like the third longest, I think, single individual title reign. Um, still very impressive. Still very iconic. Always a big fan of Rob Van Dam. I love Rob Van Dam. Here we go, giving the big five-star frog splash to the outside to Crash Holly. Hardcore rules. Anything goes. I hope you like my Rob Van Dam call. I'm gonna upload a Rob Van Dam call video, much like all my other call videos. I hope you enjoy this this uh, this episode. Again, didn't anticipate the path being so short, but you know, there's plenty more of RVD to come. There's a lot of. I really like this call. I really like the way he looks. Um, you know, I took a little bit of what I've seen other people do, and I did my own spin with it. So again, that's the beauty of making creative wrestlers in this game. But there you go. There's my Rob Van Dam Hardcore Championship run. I hope you like this. Stay tuned. This is my last path as challenger. So all the other Hardcore Championship paths I will be playing as the champion. So I would have to win the title first and then play the path. If you like this video, you know what to do. You've been on YouTube before. Like, comment, and subscribe. As always, I am Be Better Gamer. And until next time, keep watching all the wrestling. Thank you.